Hey guys, it's Danny. Today, as promised, I'm gonna tell you about my full sphagnum moss setups that I have been playing around with for a little while, how I actually do them, why I decided to do this, and what are the benefits, because obviously if I do them, there are some benefits, at least in some cases. We're also going to repot an orchid in this setup, so if that sounds interesting to you, keep watching. And if you enjoyed the video, do give it a thumbs up, it really helps it out, and why not subscribe? I post multiple times a week. Now, I want to make a little side note here. Through the years, I have been playing with full sphagnum moss setups. It's not necessarily something new. Starting from traditional Neophenicia falcata mount setups and ending with oncidiums that I planted in self-watering lechuza pots only in moss with a top layer, and even gongoras. And I have to tell you guys, all of these orchids have done tremendously well. I honestly cannot think of an instance where I managed to severely damage or rot the roots of an orchid. If I did, link me to my video down below. I have 2,000 videos. Maybe I'm missing something, but I cannot remember ever harming an orchid with sphagnum moss the way that I typically use it. However, all of these orchids are known to like moisture or to thrive in these particular setups. I have never really planted a Cattleya type notoriously drought tolerant orchids never really played around in full moth setups. But alas, we're gonna do so today because I have a little bit more courage given my history with sphagnum moss that spans oh about nine years at this point. Righty, with that out of the way, let me show you the oldest orchid that I have in this setup, which is my Dimorphorchis lowy. Purchased it last year around my birthday, so in October, and I repotted it directly in this setup in November 2021. I'll give you a close up. This orchid has sphagnum moss inside the pot and just a layer of bark at the top to shade the sphagnum moss. This orchid has been growing tremendously well in this setup. It is far less prone to getting dehydrated much more so than my other orchids since this is full sphagnum moss and I can control the quantity of water that the pot retains much better than the mixture. So I've never had dehydration on this orchid. The Dimorphorchis, in my opinion, is very prone to getting dehydrated. It looks glorious, grows very well, and the roots are looking great. Yes, I cannot see through the pot, but at the top I can see the roots are growing. So I've been experimenting with this guy for like half a year and I decided to take the leap and do the setup with some other orchids. And all of these guys that I'm showing you are Cattleya orchids. <laughs> it might sound weird, but yeah, I do believe Cattleyas actually benefit in my environment, at least from sphagnum moss. Now, why am I doing this setup? Am I not happy with the setup that I currently have? Well, let me refresh your memory. If you skipped Monday's video, my bark and moss setups are absolutely wonderful. However, ever since I started to grow my orchids, mainly under grow lights, which are always coming from above, the algae issue started to get worse and worse because now the decorative pots are not actually shading anything. So actually these pots reflect light inside. This more so because it's light colored, but the other ones do as well. And also there is light inside because I do keep quite a bit of space between the decorative pot and the interior pot. And in no time, I have a little bit of algae formation, as you can see, and this is nothing. I have some that are much, much worse. Pots that generally stay moister, that's not a word, more moist, have more algae. Now, whether it is algae or cyano, which is worse, I'm not entirely sure. I did not observe this under the microscope to tell you exactly what it is, but judging by the smell and how the roots react, and they don't react well, I'm thinking there is some cyano there that is producing some toxins, which are not good for the orchid, nor are they good for me. So yeah, that's a little bit of an issue that arose lately since the grow light situation. The orchids grow so, so well, especially the ones in opaque pots. The ones that have transparent pots, some of them are starting to struggle root-wise. The new roots that reach that layer kind of stop growing and they don't look so good. And that got me a little worried, to say the least. And since I had success with the Nemorphorchus lowly, I thought, well, what better time than the present to switch some of these orchids which were struggling in the transparent pots to something like this. 
and see if it helps it out. Will it? Maybe. I think it will because any orchid that grows in moss for me just does well as long as the aeration is proper. And this brings me to my next topic, sphagnum moss. Is it good or bad? Definitely it's not bad. It can be one, unnecessary. There are environments which simply do not need that water retention and they will do much, much better with something a lot airier. Two, it's not good quality. And again, there are territories which do not find this sphagnum moss that I'm using. It's from Best Grow. I'm not sponsored by them in any way. I really do enjoy this brand a lot. It's very good quality. Some territories don't have this quality and they might have issues with their sphagnum moss. Absolutely. But three, misuse. There are so many cases of misuse that it's not even funny. <laughs> so for this reason, I do have a plethora of videos talking about how to properly use sphagnum moss in order to give you good results if indeed you think you can benefit from sphagnum moss. So yes, absolutely 100% sphagnum moss is very good. Why is it so good? Well, first of all, it is very soft. It is like a pillow. It is not abrasive. So mechanically, it cannot damage new root tips, which is very important for sensitive rooted orchids such as Cattleya. Second, it is slightly acidic. If the pH is too alkaline, nutrients are not properly absorbed, we're gonna have some deficiency issues. Not to mention some nutrients will just remain in the pot, not being utilized, and they will build up. That's never good. With sphagnum moss, chances of that happening are not as high. I've actually I've never had buildup in sphagnum moss. And third, if packed or used correctly, sphagnum moss delivers what I always advocate for on this channel, water and aeration at the same time. And it does so in a very good ratio. If used correctly, I'm gonna say this a million times, if used incorrectly, yeah, totally, it can be soggy. But if used correctly, it is not. Bottom line, it can be one of the best, if not the best, material for orchids if you can benefit from its properties. Reason why so many people use it to either root things, to promote some roots, you know, the sphagnum bag method, which I'm not a fan of, but you know, it has good intentions <laughs> behind it. I am more of a fan of the ICUs, which you guys already know. In all of these instances, to promote root growth, generally, sphagnum moss is preferred to other materials because of these whole properties that I talked about. So, could it be a good forever home for an orchid? Absolutely. And I will show you how I do these setups. Let me just find one of the orchids that is in line to be repotted. So I'm actually going to do this orchid because even though I recently redid the scape, I had major issues with dehydration and the roots of this orchid. And already I can see algae starting to form. So since it's recent and the roots didn't get a chance to grow and even escape through the drainage holes, it is a good time to redo the setup since I'm not going to disturb the roots way too much. Look at this. I mean, you know, it depends on environment. Sometimes algae spores can be in tap water. If you didn't know, yep, yeah, they can be there. They are also in the air and hey, live on an island. Maybe that has something to do with it. Didn't have these issues in Romania, but here I do. And yes, a little bit of algae never hurt anyone and it's probably not gonna hurt an orchid, but a lot of algae and probably thano, I would argue that it does, it does hurt roots. So there we go. No need to really mess around with these roots way too much. I just wanted to remove the sphagnum moss bits that were green. And I'm now going to remove these few pieces of bark here that are attached to the growing root tip. I'm gonna leave them be. I'm also seeing a bit of blackening here, so I will remove, I guess, this old pseudo bulb. Whenever I can do it without the scissors, I do. <laughs> and here I have a typical nursery pot. It's not very tall. Let's see if it fits. If it doesn't, I'm gonna have to find a different one. I can totally make it fit, no problem there. Now, could you use a transparent pot with a full sphagnum moss setup? Yeah, absolutely, if you don't have algae issues, there's nothing stopping you. But obviously I'm trying to shade the interior mixture as much as possible. Another question you might have, why don't I put ventilation holes? Well, because I really, really, really don't want any type of light to getting in there and creating algae. Can I do without them? Yeah, I just need to be a little bit more careful. So I just put a layer of sphagnum moss on the bottom and I keep it loose and 
fluffy. I don't compress it. None of my setups are compressed sphagnum moss. Actually, I didn't mention this. All of the pots that I showed you, they're so light. They are lighter than the mixture that I make. Why? Because I have such good water retention that I really do not need to use a lot of sphagnum moss. All I want is for my root to be in a humid environment, a moist environment. It doesn't need to be soggy. It doesn't need to be soaked in water for the orchid to absorb water and be hydrated. It just needs to be moist and damp. And actually mistake number one people do with sphagnum moss is to compact it much more than they should. With compaction, you're not necessarily going to have more water retention because the water retention happens in these very fluffy strings of the sphagnum moss. If you compress them, if you squeeze them, they're just not gonna retain water. It would be like you squeeze a cloth of water. That's exactly what happens with compact sphagnum moss. It does not retain as much water as it should. And second, it suffocates the roots because these strands, these fluffy bits, is what maintain good aeration around the roots. I want the root to be like this on the sphagnum moss, not like this, you know? Don't want the sphagnum moss to squeeze the root. And the thing is, as roots grow and more and more roots are formed, they will start to press on the sphagnum moss. So they, in time, will compact to a certain degree she forgot the lyrics. The sphagnum moss. So if you are having a concert, if you compact the sphagnum moss already together with the root growth, any little bit of available air pocket will completely be <laughs> obliterated. So just keep it fluffy. Look how fluffy this is. It jiggles. It comes out of the pot. That's what you want. That's what I want to see. I don't want to see any compactness, okay? Do not do that. So I'm gonna sit the roots nicely and gently here and then continue to add more sphagnum moss. Again, not compacting it. I will press slightly on it. You'll see just to make sure that I don't have enormous air pockets and also to stabilize a little bit my orchid, but not a whole lot. Like if I would press down on it now, I would go all the way to the bottom. That's how fluffy it is. There we are, just a little bit more here. I could use another strand here or a few more strands. And actually I'm realizing I'm lying to you. This is not a full sphagnum moss setup. <laughs> It is a bark and sphagnum moss setup because we have bark at the top, don't we? Yeah, the lies. All right, that's about it. Now, on this level is where I will use my slow release fertilizer because yes, I'm still going to use it. In sphagnum moss is where the slow release works better because it's always moist. In dry setups like bark, I don't see the purpose of slow release. It's just not going to work very well. Unless you keep the bark always soggy, which you shouldn't. The purpose of it is to be an aerator. We're topping this off with bark just to shade the sphagnum moss. If I would leave it open top, it would be full of algae in a week. No exaggeration. It is so moist that algae will love it. Obviously, some people leave it open top and that's absolutely fine for them. Just think of kokedamas or not really, the Neophenicia mounding setups with that little mound of sphagnum moss. Yeah, eventually we'll have some algae in a year. Oh, for me, it happens like in five seconds. So totally fine to leave it open top, but I'm not going to do so. So with the bark, you know, you can go crazy because it doesn't suffocate anything. And I just wanna put enough to make sure I don't see that sphagnum moss. If I see it, then we have issues. <laughs> light will go there. And there we go. My orchid is slightly wobbly since she is not very well rooted. I can do something about it. Even though with sphagnum moss, there is no danger of the new roots brushing against the sphagnum moss and being damaged. I do have a little bit of bark though. So it is a good idea to still stabilize orchids, at least for a little while until more roots grow. So I am going to go ahead and do that. And there we go, much, much better. Tidy up the bamboo skewer. There we go, much better, right? 
So in a nutshell, that is my sphagnum moss setup, which I lied to you about. It's not full sphagnum moss, it's uh, mostly sphagnum moss. So it's April, right? 2022. I always write the date when I add the slow release fertilizer. Sometimes it coincides with repotting, sometimes it doesn't. And hopefully this little orchid can spend as much time as possible. Obviously some orchids with a very, very fast growth, even if the medium is still good for three years, they will not sit in the same pot for three years. They will outgrow it. But there are many orchids which are very, very, very slow growing. And they can sit in the same pot if left there for much more than two years, actually. I have to repot because the bark is breaking down, but the moss is in good quality. So this should last me quite a bit of time. So let me show you something about watering because I'm sure some of you will have some questions now regarding, well, how do we dose watering in the winter when we don't actually need as much watering? It's full sphagnum moss, it's gonna retain water. I'll show you, hold on, hold on, give me a second. Don't go away. Alrighty, one of the best features or properties of sphagnum moss is that it always evens out. If it's very, very wet in a point, the very, very dry parts of it will suck that moisture, always tending to even it out. So sphagnum moss can be watered in multiple ways. Typically, what we don't do is soak. Full soak, absolutely not needed because it's a waste of time, to be fully honest. You can do it, it's gonna soak up water. Yes, it's gonna be in the presence of water, so it's gonna fully soak it, but it's useless because you can obtain the same effect if you put it in a dish of water. If it has water at the bottom, it will direct it to the top. So the idea of orchids having wet feet is absolutely impossible with sphagnum moss. It's too wicking, it can't. If you have a pot full of bark and you put enough water to have a pool of water at the bottom, that bark will not suck up that water no matter how many magic spells Harry Potter puts on it. That's a given, it's just not gonna happen because it's not wicking. Sphagnum moss is wicking. So having that bit of information, we can play around with the setup. So if you want to fully soak the sphagnum moss, what you can do is, I'm not gonna do it now, but you can pour water enough to have a little bit of a pool of water underneath and just let it be. Come back in a few hours after the moss has soaked whatever it could soak, dump the excess if there's any excess and there you go, you fully soaked your moss. Sometimes or most of the times you get into a rhythm that you know how much water to put that you will not have excess, which is what I'm doing currently, even with the moss and bark setups. But with full moss, it works even better. Sometimes though, if you don't want to super soak it, all you can do or all you should do is just, whoop, that's it. That's it. It's the dead of winter. It is freezing outside. Your grow room is chilly. You wouldn't want to sleep in your grow room. That's how chilly it is. And the water doesn't want to evaporate. Not to worry. That's exactly what you need to do with your work. <laughs> do not run water through it. I'm kind of exaggerating it now for comedic purposes, but you get the point. You don't need to soak it all the time. That's what I'm getting at. Whereas it is summer. Sun is blazing, everybody's at the beach, but you have to stay home and water your orchids. What do you do? You pour that water, you do it, you pour it. It doesn't matter. It's gonna start to come out the other side. Yes, it's not going to get soaked up all that fast. You let it be. Do not touch it, don't, don't touch it. Let it be. Come back after a few hours and remove the excess and you have yourself a fully soaked pot. One thing you should know about sphagnum moss is that when it's dry, initially it's not gonna get super wet. It's gonna kind of float on the water. Do we see it? For a few seconds. And then it's gonna start to absorb it. So you might pour water through your pot. Most of it will come out because the moss being super dry, it doesn't start to suck it right away. It takes a few seconds for it to figure out <laughs> what it wants to do. But the more you leave it in water, the more it will start to get wet and suck that water and direct it all the way to the top. And that's something you need to know about sphagnum moss. It doesn't get wet straight away, but eventually the more it sits in water, the more it starts to absorb it. And that's how you control water quantity in your pots. Can we do this with bark? Let me hear you. No, no, we can't do this with bark. <laughs> it's one of the things I love about sphagnum moss. So now I can definitely reuse this beautiful light pink pot that I find at Ikea. By the way, I have most of my decorative pots from Ikea. This is metal. It's very light, so it goes on the Vistra shelves. 
I can easily put it here and I will not have algae anymore. I'm gonna put a little bit of water here. Just let the moss soak it up after a few hours. There's not gonna be anything left here. The moss I used is slightly, slightly damp. It's very hard to work with completely bone dry sphagnum moss. It's on the verge of getting dry, do you hear it? When it's bone dry, it crackles a lot more. It's just a tiny bit moist. So it does still have a lot of potential of absorbing the water. I'm gonna let it be. And that has been my sphagnum moss setups. Now, will I do the setup for the big vandas? No, absolutely not. Can you imagine how much moss I would have to put in this bucket? No, that is not economic at all. Would it work if I were to do it? Probably it would. <laughs> but this setup is reserved for the tinier, let's say, orchids even medium-sized cattleyas. Can it be used with Phalaenopsis? Absolutely, it can be used with any epiphyte. Also, it can be used with terrestrials. One of the things that sphagnum moss is good for is terrestrial orchids as well, if you don't wanna use soils, because it retains that humidity and moisture that terrestrial roots need. Terrestrial orchid roots do not grow in the air. So with that said, let me just clean up my working space and do the outro. Alrighty, one thing I realized I didn't touch base with is how do we know when to water? How do we know things are fairly dry and the orchid needs a watcher? Well, that's gonna be a little bit more complicated and I personally rely on my experience and my eyes. If I see the orchid getting a little bit dehydrated, I know the sphagnum moss is dry. But before we get to that, there are far easier things you can do. First of all, press on it. If you don't hear a distinct crackle, then the moss is still okay. If you do this and you hear a then it's dry. Also, you can lift up the pot and look at the drainage holes. You can see the moss through the drainage holes. Touch it. Is it dry? This is not yet fully dry. It doesn't make noise, right? If it makes noise, if it feels dry, then everything is dry. You can rest assured of that. If it's still slightly damp, it can hold on for a few more days. And also, by lifting it. Sphagnum moss, being that it retains a lot of water, will make the pot a little heavier. So at some point you can mentally learn how it feels like when it's dry versus how it feels like when it's wet, depending how much water you put in there. But basically at some point you will be able to tell just by looking at your orchid. We all get to that level at some point of knowing that, hey, this orchid is a little limpier than it should be. It's not that hard. It can be a little bit hard maybe for beginners, because it's much, much easier to learn things like a schematic, right? At least in the beginning. But at some point, it is actually much better to learn things intuitively or to rely on your intuition than like a set of rules that somebody gives you on the internet. You start with the rules and then you develop your own style, your own rhythm and your own intuition. And that's the fun part about our kids. And I think that that's about it. It is time to end. Thank you so much for watching. That has been it. Now, will I transfer everybody? to the system? No, absolutely not. I'm not gonna start to repot everybody if there's no need. But there are indeed orchids which are suffering because of that really bad cyano buildup. Those will go into the setup because even if I repot them in the exact same setup as they previously were, in a month they're gonna be full again. So I'm just gonna throw away medium after a month of use which is not fun. I realize that it's a bummer, we're not gonna see the roots, but they're gonna start to grow out of the pot. We're still gonna see some roots, but at some point, yeah. If it turns out that cyano has been messing up with my roots, oh, I'm not, I'm not gonna risk it, <laughs> especially with the very expensive and unique orchids that I have. So yeah, I'm gonna keep you up to date. We'll see how this goes, but for the kiss, it went well for the past six months. I don't see any reason why for these orchids it will not go well. So with that said, thank you for watching. I hope you have a great day and I'll keep you up to date. If you want to keep in touch with me on social media, search for me. I am at Miss Orchid Girl pretty much everywhere. If you don't have time for long videos, check out my shorts channel, which has shorter video tips, not as detailed tutorials, and also shorter versions sometimes of these videos. But most importantly, just subscribe to this channel because this is where I post my most in-depth tutorials. All right, so with that said, I'll see you next time. Bye.